We are back on Meet the Press with Ferdinand Marcos, the President of the Philippines, for this interview. Mr. President, we have just talked to General Ramos, and he says that they are charged with people power, that they feel that they can topple your regime through the use of the Filipino people. What do you say to that? Uh, they, they are now limited to a small corner of um, uh, one constabulary camp, and they talk about toppling the president. Well, um, as uh, you know, they don't have much um, military power with them. All they have is about 400 men. And uh, the moment we hit them, uh, they'll be wiped out. And secondly, with respect to people's power, uh, on my inauguration or oath taking, we will hold rallies in every capital of every uh, province, 73 and possibly about uh, 60 uh, cities. And uh, this uh, shows to you that there is no comparison about um, our power base among the people and their power base. There's no comparison about their military power and our military power. And um, I would like to say that this uh, Enrile, former defense minister, is organizing a new um, power group trying to get me to resign so he can take over as chairman of a new junta or council. Even now, this council is working. Uh, they are not going to work for Cory Aquino. They are working for themselves. Well, President the Marcos, of that, yes. Pre President Marcos, would you resign? Would you consider resigning now of that... Of course not. Well, of course not. Of course not. Well, I am president. I was proclaimed by the only constitutional body that can convert and proclaim uh, uh, the winner in a presidential election. So why should I step down? Well, the president. They talk about fraud. They talk about fraud. They have no evidence about it. I have evidence of fraud committed by the opposition. Mr. Now, with respect to these people, they have started a coup d'etat about two days ago, and they aborted it because they realized that we were up to it. Uh, and now they are continuing the coup d'etat. Mr. President, there are civilians surrounding the military rebels. Would you order your troops to fire on the civilians in order to get to the building? Uh, I beg your pardon, would they order the military Would you troops? order troops to fire on the civilians who are trying no, to guard no, the military no, no. rebels? No, no, no. no. We'll, we'll, we'll abide our time, but we will disperse the civilians, protect them, take care of them, and then we hit Enrile and Ramos. Well, but how will you get rid of... How they, don't, they don't surrender. Sir, how will you disperse those civilians without bloodshed, without violence? Oh, we, will, we will quietly push them aside in order that we can enter uh, the camp. Mr. Mr. President... The, the, the civilians realize what is happening. Mr. They President... They may be on the other side, but they're not going to get hurt. Mr. President, the White House put out yes. a statement about 12 hours ago saying, in effect, that your government has lost credibility and legitimacy. In other words, as the Chinese might say, you've lost your mandate of heaven. How are you going to rule in that case without any kind of American support? Uh, look, that is not the message that I got from President Reagan. The message that I got from President Reagan this uh, uh, afternoon or this noon was that he hoped that the Filipino people will be able to decide this without any bloodshed. And we are hoping that we can do so. But we, I have asked that we negotiate. I've offered the most generous terms to them. But no, they impose the condition that I step down. Why? Because they want to take over. This is a continuation of the rebellion they started two years ago, uh, two days ago. President Martin. Been... President Marcos, yes, the, the chairman of our Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Luger, says that you have now lost a good portion of the military, you've lost the middle class, you've lost the church. Isn't it time for you to find some way to make a transition and to leave office? Look, uh, all this talk about the church. Several of the bishops have already clarified that that church resolution is spurious. It was approved by a small minority of the bishops. Now, with respect to uh, the military, uh, we are in control of uh, probably 98 to 99% of the military. With respect to the people, 
the only constitutional body legitimately authorized to canvass the vote and to proclaim the winner is our um, parliament, just like your House of Representatives. Mr. President. Nobody can uh, deprive the House of Representatives of the United States of the right to proclaim the winner in a presidential election. And now everybody is trying to deprive the poor parliament of the power under the Constitution to proclaim the winner. Mr. President. Even the, even the media of the United States. Mr. President, do you plan to place General Ramos and Minister Enrile under arrest? Uh, if they survive uh, what may be a bloody confrontation, uh, they will be placed under arrest. Do you expect they will not survive the confrontation? They will not. Uh, do you expect they are not? They are afraid uh, to um, have a confrontation. When they saw some of the tanks coming in, they called up General Baird and they called me up, begging that uh, we do not uh, attack them with this uh, tank. Do you plan and, to? Uh, it's very obvious. You, Mr. Yes, President, yes. do you plan to arrest Cory Aquino? Some people have suggested that she is now afraid for well, her I, safety. It, it may not even be necessary. The way the junta or the council is being organized, Cory Aquino is not the president under Enrile. Enrile will be the chairman of this new council. And Cory Aquino will only be a member. This is a new power block, a new power group, trying to use uh, force, coercion, intimidation to try and bring down the president or make him resign. Mr. Well, I'm not about to resign. Mr. President, you talked a moment ago about a message that came to you today from President Reagan. Do you still regard yes. President? Do you still regard President Reagan as your friend? Well, um, yes, uh, I still think that his uh, perceptions uh, are better than most, especially the members of uh, the uh, Congress, your Congress, and the media. The perception, the problem here is the perceptions of some of uh, your people and the media is so different from reality. Now they are talking about making me resign. How can I resign after being proclaimed by the only body that can canvass and that can proclaim the winner? Mr. President, I, I, uh, I will fight for my position. Mr. President, Minister Enrile says that you uh, ordered him to steal votes in his province in the election, 350,000 votes. Is that correct? He is lying. He is lying. And I would like to prove this by having all the ballot boxes open. Let us see what uh, uh, proof uh, he has. Mr. President. I don't know how we can open, uh, we can open these ballot boxes, but I would like to see what evidence he has. He is talking about 300,000 votes, and I won by one million and a half. <coughs> Even <coughs> if there was any stealing of votes, that would not change the result of uh, the voting. How, how can they talk about fraudulence? I won in the hometown of my opponent, Corey, um, Okay, no. Mr. I won President. in the, his, her province. No, will, will you allow me? Will you allow me? Excuse um, me, sir. I won in her province. I won in her region. And don't tell me that I won by cheating when he is there. She is there. And all her uh, uh, guards are there. All her uh, um, representatives are there. That's ridiculous. Let me ask you, sir, Mr. President, if your friend Ronald Reagan were to ask you or to suggest that you resign or share power or begin an orderly transition to avoid civil let's war not, in your country, would you listen to the U.S. government and to President Reagan? There is going to be no civil war. There is no force, not even the Communist Party, NPA, and the National Democratic Front can mount a civil war in our country. I will wipe them out if they try to. Mr. President, I want to go back and ask you once again about President Reagan and ask you the oh, question yes. again. If President Reagan and his administration were to ask you for the interests of the Philippine nation to step down and prepare an orderly transition to another government, would you listen to the president, sir? Look, I do not answer speculative questions. I do not believe that he will do so. I do not believe that he will uh, derogate or de degrade our constitution by uh, pushing aside the uh, 
um, proclamation, the canvas, by our own uh, parliament. And I do not believe in answering speculative questions. Mr. If that ever happens, I, let me think about it. Let, let us talk about it. Mr. President, uh, you obviously had uh, a great deal of uh, faith in Lieutenant General Ramos. You named him as the acting chief of staff. You did that twice. Uh, you have always been very complimentary toward him. Did this come as a great shock to you? Uh, what was the question? You, you obviously had confidence in General Ramos. You appointed him to high office. Did this military revolt come as a great shock to you when General Ramos was participating in it? Oh, yes, but I realized then that they were part of the rebellion, the coup d'etat that was started about two or three days ago. And I realized that this was a conspiracy between Enrile and uh, Ramos. And uh, they must pay for it. Mr. President, thank you very much for your time once again, sir.